Hello everyone and welcome to my channel and today I'll be reading a multi-character accessory by me so let's get into that Kaza Kaza would be screaming at you to wake up because you had passed out you had gotten hit by someone who had meant him instead but you stopped them and this is where it caught you he was freaking out trembling as he picked you up in his arms and ran to the nearest infirmary to get you treated and looked upon. But even the entire time that you were passed out, nothing could stop the guilt from crawling and taking seat in his heart. It hurts him that this happened to you because of him. Because he couldn't protect you. Maybe there was no way that he could. But it still hurt him that he was the reason that you got hurt. And he vows to himself to settle everything he has. And to make sure that you'll be okay. And that in the future, no way anything like this could happen again. For now though, he was going to sit next to you and wait until you woke up. Hazel. Hazel did not expect to see blood when he entered his home. But it freaked him out. When there you were, a stab wound in your stomach, and someone standing over you. It took him a moment to apprehend them, but all he did after was scream out your name, asking if you're awake. He didn't think you'd ever have to see this, to see the love of his life, struggling to talk. Thankfully, Cookie was nearby and she was able to heal you. But, even then, he was still very tense and upset, and it would take him a long, long time to calm down after what happened, because it really made him feel horrible, and he was really worried about you. But, he will make sure that whoever did this, whoever had hired that person, would have to face justice. Albedo... Well, well, the clone had hurt you, and it was not even pretending to be albedo anymore. No, it was in the love of flower form. They wanted to hurt albedo through you, but that was a little bit too much, even for the clone. They had hurt you too much, and you were barely able to stand, crying as you called out albedo's name. And... You had no idea how he came, because he was not even a dragon spine, and yet, it felt like something in his heart had called him out to here, to come here to save you. That's why you were in his arms right now, and that's why he ran as fast as he can to get you to Mondstadt to get treatment. But, if anything... He told you not to come to Dragon's Pine again. Because for now, things were not stable. And you could not have you getting hurt again. At least, not until he settled his matters with his clone. Venti. Venti is actually really soft. So if anyone tries hurting you, that softness might also disappear. And you will hurt them in return. For daring to hurt someone that you cared about so deeply. But, when it's all over, he would be holding you close, kissing you and stroking your hair, mumbling soft apologies into your ears, and telling you that he didn't mean for you to get caught up in this, that he would have done anything for things to get better, for you not to get hurt, but he failed anyway. But next time, for sure. He will do better than this, and no one will come close to you and hurt you like that again. Scaramouche. This would make him cry if no one else was around. He'd be trembling, begging you to stay, begging you to be awake, and for all of this to be over. He never wanted to see you hurt like this. It was an idiot for doing who was trying to hurt him. If he had just loaded up the scare, even if you let him get hurt, 
he would have been fine. He's a puppet. He was the wet. But you still took the hit for him. Even though you didn't need to. And the fact that you were hurt here because of him, it made him cry. But also the fact that you cared about him so deeply as to risk losing your own life. That was something he had never felt before. That care and that amount of love directed at him. That's why he was crying as you got someone to heal you. Desperate. For you to stay awake. And to not lose you again. To not lose someone that he cares about. Once more. Tanari. Tanari would be furious at whoever hurts you. But for now, he was focused on treating you first. And getting you better. After all, he would be even more upset if anything worse happened to you. Moyan, did you seriously have to go and talk to them about me? It's fine. I was okay with whatever they were doing, he said. Then sighed softly. Please, Moyan, I love you. So don't endanger yourself for me. But, Tanari, I... Please. Promise me. I promise. He had been sad. As he held you close. Kissing you. And giving you a soft, warm smile. Telling you that he's so proud of you. And as for those people. Who were targeting him earlier. And hurt you. He was going to make them regret this. Shao. Well, someone had tried to hit him. And he was asleep. So that's why you stood in their way. And shoved them. But they did not expect them to hurt you so hard. They had hit you. Making you fall to the ground. And Shao woke up from the ruckus. And that's when he saw them. It did not take him one minute. To make them collapse on the ground and pass out. And you could see it. His anger. And the way he was so furious with them. But then his face softened as soon as he held you. He stroked your hair gently, his face softening as he held you close to his chest. I'm sorry, Ryan. Is there anything I can do? Are you really hurt? He asked while he shook your head. Just glad that he's alright. But as for that person, he was going to get a revenge. Because he was so angry at them for hurting you. And they were going to pay. Child, he's usually a happy-go-lucky person. Except he was not so happy anymore. When you were bleeding right in front of him. He was this close to crying. But being a harbinger who had fallen to the abyss. It meant that he was strong enough to be able to think. When times like this hit him. That's why he was immediately running to a healer. Even as you wanted to collapse and cry because of how much pain you were in. And as soon as he got there, he left to go and be by himself for a minute. Until you retreated, he needed to pull himself together. And when he came back to you, his eyes were red rimmed with tears. He apologized so many times for making this danger come to you. Even though he was not the one who hurt you. Yet he still felt guilty. But then, he just stroked his hair gently, telling him it's fine, and that he did nothing wrong at all. For now, that was the reassurance the child needed. So you know, you bet your ass he's going to actually hurt them. Whoever would dare hurt him and you like this, they were going to hell. And I mean it, because he'd be trembling. And maybe you would be hurt, but it would be nothing severe, with Sina around. He would know someone swallowing you. It's just, it all came as a surprise, that you got hurt. But he was able to get them away from you, in less than a second. And, that's also why they were not even able to walk back. And he had someone, to carry them to prison. He was going to deal with them later. For now, he just wanted to hold you in his arms 
and make sure that you're all right. But afterwards, he's going to lecture you very firmly about coming in the way when someone tries to hit him. Because under any circumstance, you should never try to sacrifice yourself like this. He can protect himself very well. And if it comes to it, it won't even be that hard of a hit for him. But as for you, protecting you was his first priority. And under no circumstance was he going to let anyone ruin that. <laughs>